Last year, and as a, an extension of what he just said, when I saw the list that came out in the yearbook, I said, Kim, I just did this, and I did just a couple months ago. She said, well, Kim, bring somebody in here. And, and I, the guy I got with me um, is a, a, a fellow ECU pirate teacher, which is pretty cool. Um, when our clinic out at the community college opened about seven years ago, we came out and told you what the ECU School of Dental Medicine was going to do and how it was operating. So we're, we're sort of going to give you an update, but part of the update is this guy was in the first graduating class, and that's part of the reason that I brought him. Um, in the 11 years since the school started, there have been eight sites that have been opened throughout the state, and we're one of them here. Those eight sites plus the crowd at Ross Hall in Greenville have treated 90,500 patients. And probably 30% of those people are Medicaid patients. Medicaid was a very underserved population. That's part of the reason that the School of Industry, School of Dental Medicine started, was to try to serve the underserved population. But one of the big things about ECU, only North Carolina residents can apply for it. And the encouragement with ECU School of Dental Medicine is to train these students, and hopefully they will return back to where we came from, or at least stay within the state. Last year, out of a class of somewhere in the 50s, mid uh, 50s, I think 25 students returned to North Carolina into practice. Out of 26, they went into private practice. There were 26 others who went into residencies of some sort, nine being specialties. Um, Four people went into the military service. So it's happened. Alex Chris is a dentist. He's an oral and maxillofacial surgeon. He practices in Winston-Salem. He's a North Carolina guy. He went to UNC. He went to ECU School of Dental Medicine. He got further training. I wanted him to come tell his story to you so that you get a little bit better sense of what East Carolina University School of Dental Medicine truly do. So, please welcome Alex Chris. <laughs> so, thank you all for the warm up and for this opportunity to join the radio today. Um, Dr. Smith has been a mentor and friend for a few years, and I really appreciate this invitation to come out today. Um, to give you back what Dr. Smith said, I'm North Carolina guy. I've done as much as you can imagine, I think, in North Carolina as far as my training in school and things of that nature. And because North Carolina has been so giving to me, I've tried to implement some level of giving back to North Carolina through my career, volunteers, and things of that nature. As I just mentioned, I uh, went to UNC Top Hill for college, East Carolina Middle School, part of the first class of middle school there. And then I went to Medic University of South Carolina for a residency in oral and maxillofacial surgery. Now, when I tell people I do that most of the time, they kind of look off the sides of it. That. And really, it's just especially in industry, like Dr. Smith said, but I kind of deal with more complicated side of industry. And because I have that skill, I like to in turn give back to the students as I was getting when I was a student myself at ECU. So we worked together at the Davidson Learning Clinic. Um, but the, also, as Dr. Smith mentioned, I do technically work you know, full time in a private practice in Winston Salem, and we see patients of all different backgrounds and different economic status. But then also, too, I tried to find a way to do something a little bit unconventional and get back in a little bit of a different way. So I found myself becoming chief of oral surgery at the Welfare Prison uh, Federal Medical Correctional Facility in Butler. And so there, you know, that's a population of patients who are, for some ways or another, kind of forgotten. But, you know, people think they made their mistake, they go through their time, and if they survive it, maybe they can come back into society. But out there, those guys, they need the treatment too, so we do the work on them as needed there. Um, but also, too, just to kind of, get, kind of bring this together, because I understand I have three minutes more. <laughs> um, but ECU, as Dr. Smith mentioned, is trying to reach the areas of North Carolina where no one else has been able to reach, or no one else is willing to try to reach. And I think that school, the school has really made some headway in that mission. 
you know, there's still a few counties in North Carolina where we have no dentists, but the number of dentists that are in areas in some kind of proximity is growing, it's improving. You know, like Dr. Smith mentioned, the students are graduating and staying close, or they're going away for a brief period of time, like I did, but coming back and trying to fulfill some void that's in the dental health care sector. And so with that said, you know, I think, you know, I'm going to caution again for UC for their efforts, but also too for the citizens of North Carolina, because it's my understanding that the school was founded by support of the citizens too. So if anything, all of this is continuing to come back full so circle with students such as myself going back to teach the students to give back to the community, but also to the patients and the citizens, because it was you guys that supported the school also. And so with that said, you know, again, thank you for this opportunity just to say a few brief words and an opportunity just to experience further. Thank you, Jerry, for leading the mission and leading this, this meeting and giving me an opportunity to join as a guest. Um, but if I can answer any questions, I'd be more than happy to. But again, thank you guys for this time just to say a few words. Any questions for Alice? Dr. Chris, what's the percentage, you know, as dental care is needed throughout you know, our society, what's the percentage of that group that is in that Medicaid area? No, I don't know the exact number, um, but I guess empirically what I've seen personally, it seems like the number of patients on Medicaid appears to be growing, and maybe it's a situation where I'm in a practice that's accepting it, so more people are finding us. But at the same time, 